This is a production of Cornell University. Hello. Welcome to the Personal Statement Workshop. My name is Erin Larson, and I'm a fifth year PhD candidate in ecology and evolutionary biology. And I'm Cinnamon. I'm a fourth year student in ecology and evolution working with Kelly's Media. Yeah, and so we'll be talking a little bit today. Um, I'll talk about what we'll actually be doing during the personal statement workshop, but we'll spend about 15 minutes talking to you guys about personal statements generally. And then we'll break out into our small groups where we'll talk about the personal statements that we read for you guys. Sorry, I'm gonna try to take out my scarf real quick. Um, and then we will um, also have you guys do some peer editing with each other while you're trading off talking with your grad student editors. Um, so to start with, I think a personal statement is one of the most mysterious black boxy parts of a grad school application. It's the part where you're like, what exactly am I supposed to say here? What am I supposed to do? Um, so we wanted to unpack a little bit what exactly a personal statement is. I know you guys wrote one for DPW. You probably have written some if you've been applying for grad schools this past year. But generally, a personal statement is somewhere between two to four pages long. Depends on the school. Follow the instructions they give you for length and formatting and things like that. Um, but it's really an opportunity for you to expand on your CV. So all of those sentences that you want to write about the different jobs you had, the different experiences you had, some things that um, you didn't get to put on your CV, if you want to explain why you took some time off before going to undergrad, why you switched schools, the personal statement is a great place to kind of explain your CV. It's also a chance for you to show your voice and your personality and who you are. Um, and it's more of a picture of you as both a person and a researcher. Um, that said, it's not necessarily a place to tell them everything that you like to do in your spare time, um, unless it's really related to how that would help you succeed in grad school. I um, mean, it's also a way to show that you're resilient, that you have grit, that you're gonna have what it takes to make it through the long, long road that it is, that is a PhD or a master's degree. And so in terms of structure, there's sort of a general structure that we'll talk about here, um, but it also might depend on the prompts that you get given by a specific school that you're applying to. Sometimes they'll give you some really specific directions of what they wanna see in a personal statement. But very generally, you obviously wanna have an introduction, so you wanna have some sort of narrative hook. One example of a hook might be an anecdote from your childhood or from and sometime in your lifetime that, about why you decided you wanted to study biology. Um, but keep that pretty short and sweet because what, really what you wanna be able to get into is your recent past in terms of sort of the post high school, your influential classes, your mentors, your research experiences, and then into your future. So you wanna make sure that you're also forward looking as you move towards the end of that personal statement. So you're talking about why you wanna to go to grad school, specifically why you wanna to go to grad school at that particular place that you're applying to and why it's a good fit for you. And then you wanna sort of wrap it all up with some sort of forward looking summary statement or conclusion. And so it can be a little overwhelming to get started. You guys already have done that though. You already have something that you can work with and edit. Um, but you want to make sure that you know your audience. You want to know the department that you're applying to. What are they looking for? What are professors doing there? What's the school like? Is it a more agriculturally focused school? Is it a school that focuses more on theoretical biology, something like that? Um, you also want to know the strengths and resources it has and why you want to go there and what about it is drawing you there. Um, especially, like we mentioned before, if they ask you specific questions to address, you want to make sure that you hit those um, in your personal statement. And then you also want to think about what have been your influential experiences? What's driving you to want to study biology and to want to go to graduate school? And you can really shape your outline around those. And then you'll finally craft a clear main message with supporting information, which is just as easy as it sounds. <laughs> but um, what we'll talk about too a little bit is how to actually kick it up a notch. So how to make sure that your personal statement really shines. Um, one thing to do is to make sure that you tailor each of your personal statements to each school. So you can have sort of your modular personal statement that you've crafted, but then make sure that you're, um, bless you, <laughs> that you're linking it into each school that you're applying to. Um, and that means thinking about specifically naming professors possibly that you're excited about working with or specific resources at each of those schools. And you also wanna make sure that this piece of, um, this document is in conversation with your research statement too. So that doesn't mean that they totally overlap, but you can mention some of the same experiences that you mentioned in your research statement, but maybe go more into depth about how they developed you as a person and as a researcher, rather than specifically the research that you did. 
Um, also, make sure that you get feedback on this. This is going to be an opportunity for you guys to get lots of feedback. Um, but send it to friends, family, professors, mentors. Um, the more feedback and the more drafts you can go through, the better. And Cinnamon will talk in a little bit about how helpful all that feedback can be. Um, really let you shine through. Um, don't be afraid to have some of your voice, your personal experiences that you feel comfortable sharing. Um, and really be the hero of your own story. It can be a little hard to want to toot your own horn, but this is the place to really be the active um, participant in your narrative. Um, and make sure that you give yourself lots of time um, to actually go through all these drafts and editing. So even though this seems like maybe the thing that you want to do last when you're doing your applications for grad school, make sure you leave yourself plenty of time to actually focus on this, which you guys are in great shape for. So now Cinnamon's going to take us through a motivating real life example yeah. <laughs> of a personal statement. Yeah. Hi. Um, so I'm, what I'm going to show you is actually two versions of a personal statement um, for the GRSP, um, which is a graduate research um, fellowship program. Um, so the first version was not successful. I did not get the fellowship. The second version was. And I think the thing that changed the most in my application packet was actually my personal statement. Um, so I'm going to take us through what I changed between the first and second time that I applied. Okay. Um, so just first, some overall tips. Um, so I'm going to tell you these tips and then give you some concrete examples. Um, so something that's really important is to be space conscious. Um, and then also, you don't have to try to fit in every life experience. It is a personal statement, but they don't need to know every step of your whole life. It's okay to editorialize. Um, also, avoiding vague phrasing, which I'll get more into, um, avoiding cliches, showing and not telling. So it's one thing to say, oh, I love biology. It's another thing to show that you love biology. Um, and then last, as Erin was saying, it's really, really important to get help editing. And um, so this difference between the first and second versions wasn't just like me, like sitting in my office, like thinking about how I can make it better. A lot of it was suggestions that I got from mentors and other uh, students that were applying for this. Okay, um, so this is the overall intro. Um, so you can see in draft one, it's pretty long. Um, the second one, I actually ended up deleting an entire paragraph. Um, and so the first thing I deleted, um, so it's really tempting to start with a summary of what you're going to talk about in your essay. But most of these are pretty short, two, three pages. So you don't need a summary up front. Um, it can be helpful to start with a summary just to orient yourself, but you don't need to have this. Um, the second thing uh, that I cut a lot out of was um, tracking my exact story through college. So I started off in a different uh, major, and then I was like, oh, I want to study cancer, and now I don't, and I'm going to study plants, and I'm going to study frogs, and it, that doesn't all need to go in here. <laughs> so you can just, so this is everything I did. I changed this to one sentence. Um, so it's okay to like have a winding path, but you don't need to recapitulate it here. Um, something else uh, that I did a lot, definitely, when I first started writing and that I've seen um, in some of the essays that I was looking through um, is like this really big and cliche opening sentence. Um, and this is actually taken like from my, from my actual essay. So a lot of people will have some version of, oh, from an early age, I was like tromping in the ponds or like interested in nature or like, you know, whatever. But like everyone will say this. So don't... <laughs> So don't do that. Um, so, um, and then this like second example. So these are all sentences from the first version. Um, so this like early engagement in nature, which sounds really great, but it's like, what does that even mean? I don't know. Like, what was I doing? <laughs> and then uh, this last one is this fascination, which led me to study the biology. Also, this fascination, pretty big. Okay, and so this is probably like the biggest change that I made in my personal statement. Um, so Aaron mentioned a little bit the narrative hook, and this is where you're really doing the showing and not telling. And this idea actually wasn't my idea. Somebody else who had gotten the GRSP read my draft and was like, oh yeah, this is nice, but like your first draft is really vague, and could you give some sort of like anecdote? Um, so you can see this first draft. Um, Grew up in a rural setting, blah, blah, blah. Lots of people have that. And then I changed it into like more of this story, uh, which I could read to you or I can give you a second to read. <laughs> uh, OK, so I did this dramatic reenactment last year, so I guess. 
Okay. Um, all right. So here's my final intro to my JRFC statement. 9 p.m. I'm lying on my stomach in six inches of stinky, gooey pond muck and peering down a dark drainage pipe. The hunched forms of Rana Catsfiana, the American bullfrog, visible but beyond my reach. A foot to your left! I call to my field assistant, who's attempting to startle the frogs down the pipe of the pole. She taps one of the frogs and it hops into my range. Hurt hammering, I lunge to sweep it into my net. I got it. I stand triumphant, grinning ear to ear, mission accomplished. This is not a story from my most recent field season. This is me at nine years old, although not much has changed. And the field assistant is my younger sister, the mission to catch the frog for show and tell. <laughs> and so, so this is one example. It's obviously an example from my childhood, but I've also seen um, this done successfully with other types of stories. It could be a class that you took. Um, it could be a question that you think about a lot. Um, I saw one really good example while I was going through um, some of your statements. Somebody is really interested in like invasive species. And so the process of like realizing that organisms that they really loved as a kid are actually like invasive organisms. And so it doesn't have to be exactly like this, obviously. Um, and then another nice thing to do is if you start with some sort of example to kind of weave it through as you go on. Um, so, I showed you earlier the sort of vague, like, oh, early exposure, like, fascination, whatever. Um, but then I linked it back to these actual concrete things that I would then go on to talk about in my research statement. Um, so uh, mutability, watching the drain pipe fill with water and then drain, which is when you could see the frogs, um, interconnectedness, and diversity with all the um, animals at the pond. Um, so if you're going to go this route, it's really nice to tie it into actual concrete ideas and things that you want to study in graduate school. Okay. Uh, and then the last thing, which we are like really hammering home today, is it is so important to have somebody else read your statement. Um, so you can see these are three different people that I had read my statement uh, between the first and second time. And there's a lot of read, a lot of deleted things and added things. Um, but this is super important, and like, don't be afraid of it. Um, it is a personal statement, so it can feel kind of uncomfortable, but it's so important. Um, something else, oh, yeah, it's also different from a college statement, um, which I was talking about at the beginning. Um, it's, you really have to make sure it goes back to ultimately what you're interested in pursuing in graduate school, uh, which is what Aaron was saying. And then a last point um, that I think um, has come up a lot um, is how to talk about difficult situations. Um, so a lot of people will have something that came up for them personally or academically that affected grades. And so it's OK to talk about those things in your personal statement. It's a good opportunity to explain um, any sort of like adversity that you face. Um, a couple of pointers on that. Um, it's good to be brief if you can. You don't want to go into the situation so much that you're cutting out um, a discussion of your research interests, for example. And it's also good uh, for the purpose of a personal statement to be generally positive and forward looking. Um, so, okay, so that's it. Okay. Then I think we're going to take. We'll take questions yeah, too. So, you guys are going to have. Oh, sorry, you can clap for us. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're going to um, have a little bit of a brief. Q&A for you guys, but also keep in mind that you're going to be meeting one-on-one -on -one with two grad students who also read your personal statement. So if you have a question that you feel like is like a general one from this that might be helpful for a lot of you guys to hear about, um, that, that was the time to do that. And then we'll break out into those smaller groups. Yeah. I find about personal statements, the ones I've done so far have all been for our use, is that uh, when I talk to scientists who served on committees, they have conflicting information about what they do and don't want to see. <laughs> right. So one, so one thing of this thing and the other thing thinks it's great. And it, yeah, unless you know ahead of time what your application is going to be like. Um, right. So the question was this idea of like, if you get conflicting information about like, oh, this anecdote's great versus like, oh, this anecdote sucks. And the idea too that like the people that you're applying to might have differing opinions. Um, so. One way that I would think about getting around that is really do your research on the school and the resources. I think um, Cinnamon's example is awesome of her narrative hook, but that's not like the only way to do a narrative hook either. There's a lot of different ways to open up in a way that 
kind of draws the reader in and has your voice. And it should be something that feels natural to you and your story. So if writing about catching frogs with your sister in that way doesn't feel like something that would be very genuine to you, then you don't, it's not like a prescriptive, you have to start your statement this way. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think there's a whole range of issues that, you know, come up, like, for instance, when you talks about something, and in my case, I'm talking, you know, it's very, it's very hard to talk about coming back to school with an older student and why I switched careers without involving your disability. And it's very difficult. I have no trouble, you know, talking about that. But some people, some people are like happy to hear that, and and so yeah, that's cool. That makes total sense. And other people are like, what a bummer. You know? <laughs> yeah. Well, I think that gets to the idea too of like yeah. the explaining difficult difficult situations, but making sure that you keep it brief and that you keep it towards the future. Because the idea of the personal statement is that you're spending a little bit of time looking backwards and reflecting, but you're using that to drive. Here's what I'm doing next. Like this is what's motivating me to move forward and to go to grad school and to succeed in grad school. Not so much just like, oh, I'm looking back. Like it's not a therapy yeah. session. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. like you're kind of trying to take away the main lessons that you learn from each thing in a way that's looking forward, which can be a really tough balance to yeah. strike. Yeah, and this, um, yeah, so like this explaining situations, like I had something that like affected my grades in my first draft actually, like there's a paragraph on it. And then I had someone that was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, like what Aaron's saying, like being positive and forward looking and then also getting other people to look mm -hmm. at it to see like, oh, does this like strike you in an okay way? Is, am I like presenting it as like, oh, this is something that shows that I'm like really resilient and like uh, really like dedicated to this path or is this something that is like taking away from the rest of my, or like drawing attention away from the rest of my application. So getting feedback on that is also important. Oh, uh, Cinnamon, let's repeat the question real quick. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so. Um, so the question was, uh, this was for my GRFP and then asking um, if we had to include our grades for this. I think we did include a transcript. There's a transcript. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, so this gets back to what Aaron was saying about reading the instructions. So there's actually, I went back and looked at my grad, actual grad school app and there, um, there's a lot of variation in what, uh, different universities will ask for. Some of them do like a combined personal. So the GRP does a combined personal statement with research experience. So those are both together. Um, other universities will have like a statement of purpose separate from a research statement. Um, and then some just have one statement. So you really have to read the directions for the specific university. Yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah. so I'm teaching freshman writing right now and I cannot, express enough is it okay if I swear for the maybe not the crappy first draft is very important so it's so much easier to start with a crappy or maybe not so crappy but maybe not quite right for this particular thing um piece of writing and then edit it to fit the next thing than it is to be like blank page ah, I have to write like five pages about this thing so yeah what you guys and what I, we've seen in editing and what you guys applied with for your personal statement is like a place to start for grad school applications. In some cases, I know some of you folks have already applied with the personal statements that you sent us too. So like, um, it's better to start with something and then you can kind of move paragraphs around and expand more on one point if you need to lengthen, add in a new idea, like, but it's better to start with something to edit than to start with a blank page in a lot of cases, yeah. Yeah, that's a great point. Um, so the idea of having your letter writers go into some of the more of the detail about an adverse experience you had or a couple semesters or however, whatever came up. Because um, keep in mind too that you have, this whole thing is a whole package and the personal statement is one point of that package. So there, it's okay for some things to be brief in some places and to be expanded on in other places as well. Yeah, and um, yeah go ahead. Yeah, it's also good practice to send these statements to your letter writers. So yeah, yeah. they should see these. Um, we can take one more question, then I think we're going to need to time, just time-wise, move out into the um, editing so that you get time with your grad student and peer advisors, if there's, or editors, I mean, if there's any other questions or lingering things. All right. This has been a production of Cornell University, on the web at cornell.edu.